Does not wisdom call? And does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Praying on this land, we acknowledge the Narunga people, traditional custodians upon whose ancestral lands we meet, and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of Aboriginal people to country. Well, good morning and welcome to worship with the Anglicans from the York Peninsula in South Australia. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. It's an opportunity for us to reflect on God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Please uh, enjoy the service. The parts in yellow are for you to join in with and the hymns are there for you to sing. So sing with gusto. Now, just take a moment to sit back, relax and enjoy your time with God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you.
Let us pray. Father, we praise you that through your word and Holy Spirit you created all things. You revealed your salvation in all the world through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Proverbs, chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Besides the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of all portals, she cries out, To you, O my people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not made the earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew the circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the foundations of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker. I was daily his delight, rejoicing all before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 16, beginning at verse 12. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak on his own. 
but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. For the Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. The um, Feast of the Trinity that we celebrate today is one that has always been a challenge to preachers. Somehow we feel obliged to explain what the Trinity is. After several goes at study, I think that I have uh, very little answer to that question um, because what we are trying to do is get our finite minds around the infinite. And so whatever we say, whatever we look at is only going to be partial in the understanding of, of what it means to be God, three persons, one God. What I'd like to look at today is Proverbs, Proverbs 8, that we had read. Uh, it is exciting in the sense that in Proverbs, the figure of Christ is, is portrayed as being wisdom. And there is the lovely verse after we have um, heard that wisdom is, is there and is present and is calling out. That lovely verse. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Here we see the um, pre-existent uh, image of Christ. That wonderful sense that Christ was there as part of the creation. Uh, he is, was there before the foundation of the world. He was there as part of the creation. And that lovely word a little later on, he described, is described as a master worker, working hand in glove with, with the Father to create the world as we know it. So, essentially, if we are to call ourselves Christian, then we ought to have our focus perhaps a little more on the creation that he prepared. For he didn't do it by accident, and it reflects his glory, and it reflects the glory of God. So, Christ, the pre-existent one, was the creator and the creation is something that we, as God's people, ought to be focused on. One of the, the great disadvantages of the uh, current movements towards um, environmental responsibility and, um, if you like, green um, caring, one of the great problems of that is it attempts to do it without a creator. Once we start to see creation is an accident, then perhaps um, we sort of see it as something that is random and perhaps uh, can change, can be changed. Um, I'm not a, a greenie, I'm not an environmentalist in the sense that those words have now come to be, but like many Christians, I have come to understand that our faith requires us to be concerned about the environment. And I live in a wonderful part of the world. Uh, if you go down to the Innes National Park and if you've never been there, you, you ought to go there. Uh, it is just magnificent, God's creation. Or take a journey to Akarula, 
to the outback, to the Flinders Ranges. And here is the great hand of God at work, creating beauty for us to enjoy. And as God's person, I ought to be protecting that from exploitation and certainly from danger. There is a second sort of sense that then, you know, God created these things. God has a plan for these things and God will care with my assistance for these things. Now in the past we've often seen um, that sort of command from uh, God when he cast the humanity out of Eden that we are to care for and tend the earth and, and if, it, if you like we are to be the managers of, of uh, the earth as we see it and you know we ought to be but there's a difference between uh, the tender care and the using what we have for our own personal gain uh, even a, as I say I used to have arguments in Tasmania with um, the environmentalists there who would, would have um, places locked up but they could go and see the beauty but not take anyone else there we have great joy in, in uh, what has been created by our Heavenly Father, by Jesus. And at Trinity, we recognise the full perfection of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But at Trinity, we also recognise the product of God's labour, and that is our humanity. The, the lovely verses that, that end that rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race now God loves us doesn't mean he's not disappointed and certainly as we look around our world we see this sort of movement towards destruction rather than building up but that lovely lovely sense that God has created us for his companionship it makes us special and he made the um, creation for us too. So it's really, really interesting to step back and to think at the time of the Trinity to reflect on the hand of God that has prepared us. And there is that wonderful hill, uh, um, psalm that wonderful psalm that we do have today. O oh Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Perhaps we have this terrible sense that we should understand the Trinity. Um, some of us have given up long ago. I think perhaps the best thing I could say is I know what the Trinity is not and will fight um, bad interpretations but that rather than trying to understand the Trinity what does it say if we're able to worship the Trinity and in the fullness of the creation that we experience surely as we come closer to God and to his creation our lives must change and we must reach out and touch the world lightly. I love that um, wonderful sort of sense um, that we have, you know, leave nothing but footprints, take nothing but photographs. It reflects to me that sort of concept of dwelling in, in harmony and uh, in consort with the creation, which after all is God's creation. 
Why do I like physics? Because physics helps explain it. Why is my passion for geology there? Because geology tells me the work of the hand of God. But above all, at this season, let us take a moment to reflect on what God has given us and be grateful, be thankful, and worship Him. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen, seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through his prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. A prayer for our diocese. God of hope and love, you have called us to be the body of Christ. Inspire us in the Diocese of Loughborough to worship with joy and energy, serve with compassion and be welcoming of others in our communities so that we all know the good news of Jesus to whom you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory forever. Amen. As we are preparing to farewell Bishop John and choose a new bishop for Willocra, we pray this prayer. Eternal God, Shepherd and Guide, in your mercy give your church in this diocese a shepherd after your own heart, who will walk in your way and with loving care watch over your people. Give us a leader of vision and a teacher of your truth so that your church may be built up and your name glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O God, Creator, Word and Spirit, that in confidence we can bring our prayers to you. The response to the bidding God of glory, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Creator God, we give you thanks for the beauty and abundance of this world and pray for the preservation of the earth and a responsible use of its resources. We pray for your people whose land and livelihoods have been destroyed through war or natural disasters. Those who live in places of war, oppression, or deprivation, remembering those living in the Ukraine and Myanmar, for all those living in fear of terrorism. Unite your people in the community of justice, that we may live together in peace and care responsibly for the world you have entrusted to us. God of glory, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wisdom and word of God, 
you chose to dwell with the children of humanity. Hear our prayer for your worldwide church. We pray for the church in places where it is persecuted and ignored, for church leaders and for all who minister or serve in your name, today upholding Francis Cook and CMS, the work of the Anglican Overseas Aid and Anglicare, BCA and ABM. Unite your people in the community of faith that we may grow in understanding of your word and proclaim your gospel in all the world. God of glory, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of God, you hovered over the waters of creation and you are with us today, bringing love and peace. We pray for those in society who are disadvantaged or neglected, for the frail, the vulnerable, and all who are not valued. We give thanks for our families and our friends, for the work of police, fire, SES and ambulance officers. Unite your people in a community of love, that we may support the weak, care for the vulnerable, and welcome the outsider in our midst. God of glory in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, you give life to your people, comforting us in our sorrows and sustaining us in our needs. We pray for all who suffer, the grief-stricken and the broken-hearted and all in despair, for those who are overworked and for those with no work, for the sick and the dying, and all who care for them. Unite your people in a community of compassion that we may bring consolation to the suffering and uphold one another in times of need. God of glory in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, you bring your people from death to everlasting life. We thank you for all who have died in the faith. We remember the saints and the martyrs, those who of this district have gone before us and those whose yearly remembrance occurs at this time. And for those whom we have known and loved. Unite your people in a community of hope that at our life's end we may be raised to eternal life to share with all your saints in glory. God of glory, creator, word and spirit, in your mercy hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our ending, work your resurrection power in the lives of your people everywhere as we join our prayers with yours. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Through him you have revealed to us your glory in the community of your love, three persons, one God, ever worshipped and adored. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup and again giving you thanks he gave it to his disciples saying drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup is one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen.
as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident in Christ. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trouble and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It is right to break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Who else can make every king bow down? 
the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dream.